Hi, hello, folks, potters and fellow travellers. Greetings. Yeah, you just caught me here. I'm on the I'm on the decorating bench here. I'm just uh, doing a bit of banding. Um, yeah, I generally do the banding before I do the decorating. I do. I sort of tend to band all of the pots first, and then I decorate them. What is banding? You're probably thinking. What's he talking about? Banding. <laughs> well, banding is just is basically putting these lines. Uh, you can put them wherever you want to put them. I generally put them on the top. Usually put a, a, an iron oxide line and then a cobalt line underneath it. And then I do the handle. It's you want to get it on centre. that it's a good place to it's a good place to start if you want to get into the world of brush decorating you can learn a lot about your 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 brushes um, uh, how they operate you know Brush decorating, yeah, there's there's a lot to learn. You know about the application of the, the pigment, the thickness. Are we in the picture. Are we in the picture? Yeah, I think we are. Yeah, the thickness of the uh, the pigment. Um, now with these particular ones which are raw glazed, so I've glazed the inside first and then I glaze the outside afterwards. So what tends to happen, you tend to get, when you do that, a, a double thickness right on the top here, where the outside coat meets the inside coat and they kind of overlap, if you know what I mean. And that does present um, some problems as far as uh, getting, sometimes that extra thickness there is more than you, more than you, more than you want, you know. Or it might tend to globulate, there's a word for you, globulate. Um, it, it might present, you know, uh, globules running, etc. So, yeah, it's... You learn as you go, you know. So this is iron oxide that I'm putting on right now. Um, you have to be careful. You see, if you if you apply it too thin, it it doesn't look good. It looks wishy washy. If you apply it too thick, it tends to look uh, it, because it, in the reduction it tends to turn a sort of rather murky purpley crisp and it almost has a like a crystalline effect because basically what you're doing by reducing so you're reducing you are reverting it back to its base metal so in, in the case of copper you would revert back to copper that's why when you do reduction firing um raku 
reduction firing and using copper carbonate or copper oxide, it goes back to, to the base metal, which is copper. Ooh. So there's an instance, you see, where I didn't have enough um, liquid on, on my brush and it's, um, it's kind of the, the line has, has petered out, you know. Now that could also be because I've had to do some, some scraping in odd places and that can leave the surface of the glaze dry and powdery. You see. So if that's something like that happens again, I just reload the brush and then yeah, clearly here there is a little bit of powderiness. So it's when you get powder on the surface, the the brush does not administer it doesn't flow. It kind of stutters and breaks up and it, and it looks doesn't look good. Yeah, so in a, in some of these cases here, where there was the odd run, I have taken the blade, you see, and have just very lightly taken back the excess glaze. I don't like the, the look of the run on this particular glaze. As I've already explained, I, it's not that I'm against. I'm against runs or that I don't like them. It, it all depends on 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 the glaze etc you have to keep an open mind don't you to these things yeah yeah we're sort of expecting snow tonight and uh, tomorrow well this big storm that's coming across, going to dump five to eight inches of snow and ice as well, mixed in with it. So that's going to be starting later tonight at some point. So here on this iron oxide tile here, I am. You see what I'm doing? I, I've got. I've got a. Um, bring down the, the camera here so you can see a bit closer. So you see I've got quite a lot of iron oxide here but I add water to it and bring it down here and then I sort of I, I mix it here so I get a nice um, a nice consistency you don't want it too thick, you don't want it too watery, so you have to learn that, you see. It... Alright. So, let me hold a camera, see if I can be clever and do this. We, we like the details, Simon. Yeah, I know you do. Okay, Ooh, I'm just going to spin it like that and then... Not enough. So you've got to bear in mind that each time it goes round, it's. I'm going to have to put the camera back because I'm not. I'm not being, being not being very successful there. <laughs> Plus the fact we're getting dizzy, Simon. You know we don't like that. I know. Okay, so. Yeah, it, it, you see, I, I I I tend to rest my arm and hold it in this position, so I can keep that rock steady. There, like that. That's difficult to do if you're holding a camera at the same time. Dee, 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 dee. Yeah, this is pretty basic stuff, but you know what? There's not many people out there probably teaching it, are there? Maybe there are, I don't know. So let's just talk briefly about what are these pigments we're doing here. So we have iron oxide. Um, so I buy um, and use synthetic red iron oxide. 
So if you go to your pottery supplier and you want to buy some iron oxide and you ask for iron oxide, he'll say, what kind of iron oxide do you want? What kind of red, red iron oxide do you want? Bearing in mind that iron oxide comes in different, different forms. It can come as ye yellow iron oxide, you can get black iron oxide, and you get red iron oxide. I think that's all. Anyway, so the red iron oxide, which is what we want, is you can either get natural red iron oxide, you can get Spanish red iron oxide, of which I have some actually, but I, I haven't actually used it as yet. Um, natural, Spanish, uh, synthetic. Now this is what I'm using, this is synthetic red iron oxide. And um, I, I find this to be generally, the, well, as I say, I haven't tried the, the Spanish but I was getting satisfactory results with the synthetic red iron oxide. Just probably means its, it's origin is somehow synthetically arrived at. Or, or it, well, I don't, I don't actually know what I'm talking about because I don't even know how they produce it. I'm just guessing, you know. Whereas natural red iron oxide is probably more from a natural source, perhaps, whereas the other is from a synthetic source. I do have some yellow red iron oxide. Uh, well, I have a clay, a clay body that is exceedingly rich in yellow, yellow iron oxide. Yeah, these tankards are that a different shape, you see, than the the regular ones. So while I'm doing this, while I'm at this stage of the game, it's always a good idea to check the bottom of the piece, make sure there's no spots of glaze that got missed, you see. So just check that at this moment. At this moment in time. Now, the next thing is, uh, yeah, I've got some, okay, I'm going to have to switch boards now. This is a classic example why why we have wear boards, okay? I can now move these these pieces. Um, I was gonna have to put them over here. Yeah. Looks nice. And I've got some more here. Yeah, I've just uh, I just put up one of these these lights I was telling you about the other day. Um, I've just put up one here, right above my my decorating bench, and it's it's very good. It's a daylight bulb. Yeah, yeah you can find them on um, Walmart website. They are a bargain. So, so these are going to be uh, sprayed with wood ash on the outside, but I'm just going to band the top bit. So yeah, just going back to the what I was talking about. So the iron oxide, uh, red iron oxide synthetic, and I use. It's a recipe of my dad's actually. Um, for the decorating, like what we're doing for the pigment, you basically need some 25% or let's start with the 75%, 75% synthetic red iron oxide and 25% um, a red clay, basically a low temperature red clay. I think this lot I'm using now, I use some uh, stuff called red art out of a bag that I had red art just red clay powder you know but I sometimes I've used uh, actual some like a terracotta red clay low temperature I've used that before 
I think in this case I mixed up a batch of it and I used red iron. Okay, so that's 75% red iron oxide synthetic and 25% uh, red clay. All right, that's what we're using right now to do this. And the the cobalt is. Hang on, let me just finish this one. Dee, 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 dee. Okay. Yeah. So this cobalt here. Again, is a recipe of my dad's. You see, now I'm using. So here's a. I'll come back to the, the the cobalt in a second. Let's just talk about the banding wheel, because you need to have a good banding wheel. You see, now I'm not. I put. I put. I like this kind of banding wheel. Now there's different kinds of banding wheels that you can buy. Some are expensive, those heavy shimpo ones. Sometimes they're rather low, flat, low to the low to the table, you know. This one is this one is on a stalk, you see, like this. So what what do you buy? You know, what do you what, what do you rec what do, what do I recommend? Well, I recommend personally, I like these. They're they're cheaper. I think I paid about 30 bucks for this one. They're cheaper than those Shimpo ones, which are kind of heavy. But what I don't, what I like about these is I can do this, you see. I've got control over the spinning because I, that's, that's how it's designed, you see. It's got that. So you can, you can spin it underneath with your fingers like this. Or you can do a half turn, stop. Now you notice with with these ones, I am I am I'm banding, I'm banding, and with the with the cobalt, I'm coming around like that. Oop, stop! You can't do that very easily with those ones that don't have a stalk. So consider that when buying a uh, a banding wheel. Because this is actually, I think, very important for me to, to have this ability to start it and stop it like that. It's an Amoco, Amoco, okay? I wouldn't say it's a quality product. I had to take a file to it when I got it and deburr it because it was like sharp from... Oh, no one did any, any quality control on the thing. Clearly. Anyway, uh, yeah, you can find these. Okay, let's talk back again about the pigment. The. Okay, so you're going to learn how to. Ah, oh, look here. You see, I've got some. Uh, some globulation has has occurred here. So I've just got to just with a. A, a small knife. Just correct that. Okay. Now, you know, you don't have to remove that like I did. Again, it's down to your own sensibilities and what you, what you, what you feel is right for you, you know. This is not a world in where something is right and something is wrong uh, necessarily, you know. It's down to personal taste a little bit, so. Yeah, so the, the, the cobalt, the recipe for the cobalt, bearing in mind that these recipes are for cone 10, okay? Don't ask me what they're going to do at cone 6 or low temperature, I don't know, but these are for cone 10. Um, four ingredients in this pigment. Uh, cobalt oxide, 25%. Red iron oxide, this synthetic here, 25%. Manganese dioxide, be careful with that one because it's, it's poisonous, handle it carefully. 
Okay, manganese dioxide, 25%. And dry, crushed porcelain clay body, 25%. Whoa, that's a mouthful, Simon. Dry, crushed, porcelain, clay body, yeah. Having some clay... I just saw a little, a little lump of clay on the side there and I... and I thought to clean it back and as I cleaned it back it was revealed a hole there now so now I've got a problem I've got to <laughs> you, you, you probably can't see it very well but right there where my finger is there's a little bit of an indentation well these are not glazed on the outside so that's going to be a problem I'm going to have to I'm going to have to devise a way to Maybe that'll work. To camouflage it, you know, to fill it. I think it'll be okay. I'll I'll spray a lot of wood ash over that area to 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 hide it, you know, so it won't it won't notice. Um, where are we? Gosh, I don't know how long I've been filming. Uh, we better wrap this one up, I think. Let's we'll do one more here. Yeah, so the the cobalt, basically, now you notice this one, and you do find that with, with quite a lot of pots, you'll find that when you've, you see it's a little bit wobbly looking. What I would say to that is, don't worry about it. Don't get too hung up on it being having to be perfect. If you look at it there, it looks great, doesn't it? Doesn't look like it's in it. Doesn't look like it's, you can't see a wobble you see on a stationary pot. You can only see a wobble if you revolve it around and around and around. Well in real life after the pot's been fired and finished and come out of the kiln, you're not even going to notice that for goodness sake. So don't get too too perturbed about it, just uh, it, it just may present a little bit of difficulty as far as the banding is concerned. But so I'm just gonna get here. See, every once in a while I've got to add a little bit of water to the, the pigment here to loosen it up, and so I can you know get it into a nice it's got a flow, you see, flow off the end of the brush. So yeah, we've got a little bit of a wobble on this one, but you know, I guarantee you now is the only time you're going to see that wobble. After this, you'll never see it again. You won't even notice it. Yeah. Dee -dee -dee. Yeah, it's a kind of basic video today, isn't it, really, I suppose, but... It's all good information, you see. If you're if you're somebody who's a little bit of a beginner, unsure about what to what to do, what kind of unsure about getting a banding wheel, you know. Um, let's just talk very very quickly about brushes. I mean, these particular brushes I buy at my pottery supplier. They they could be made in, they always used to be, the better ones were made in Japan. And these days though, the, the ones that are made in China had, have been better, you know. What you need is a nice, a nice springiness to the, to the, to the bristles. Um, so that they, they flip back, you know. Yeah, I've got some brushes here somebody made, sent me some samples. Um, yeah, so spend some money, get some decent brushes. I recommend that. And 
cheap is not always the best by any means. Okay folks, there it is. Just a brief recap on... Uh, let's do one more. <laughs> I, I, I can't go more than 29 and a half minutes with these videos, otherwise it, for some reason it... Something happens in the camera or the card or something. I don't think we've been as long as that there. Okay. Yeah. Keep practicing, everybody. Keep practicing. Don't be discouraged. A bad firing or something that doesn't work is normal along the way, you know, in the on the learning curve. So don't. Uh, Don't be discouraged, continue, things will change. All right, there it is. Yes, we have T-shirts up on the website, tools. I'm very, very low on pots at the minute. I've got to get some more pots up there. Eh, I know Christmas is probably going to be come and gone before I've got myself sorted out. But yeah, go there anyway. I've got, I've got loads more pots than what I've got up there, trust me. It's just, got behind really, to be honest. Okay, folks, thanks for joining me. Keep practicing. I'll see you soon. Adios. Adios.